Yeah, a little marketing update here. Uh, obviously, Arkansas Charity Exhibition Game, Saturday at 3 o'clock. Uh, we appreciate Arkansas basketball, Coach Muss and those guys. I think it'll be a win-win Saturday. Uh, both teams will win the ability to play great competition before the season starts. Uh, we all play the closed-door scrimmages, but I think both teams will benefit in this game playing kind of a more game-like feel. So we appreciate Arkansas coming. Look forward to the competition and certainly wish them the best this season. Tickets are available uh, right now. Appreciate all y'all letting the fans know, letting Austin know, letting Central Texas know. Um, it's on the Texas Ticket website. You can call the ticket office. Uh, they're available as we speak, it's my understanding, or here in the next couple hours. $25 a seat. Appreciate our season ticket holders' understanding of this. It's an NCAA rule. It can't be a part of the season ticket package. Plus, we're proud to be chaired up with two local Austin Capital City charities that both help kids. Uh, proceeds will go to those two charities. So we hope to accomplish a lot on Saturday. Um, and one of the main priorities is to raise money for these two great causes uh, Saturday. Appreciate the fans coming out. We look forward to a great crowd. If you guys could make sure the students know as well, uh, the game's free for students with the big ticket. Uh, the corral is open. Encourage everybody to join the corral and follow them on social media, the official student section for men's basketball at the University of Texas. Appreciate every, all the work that's gone into Lauren and her team and everything that's created the uh, corral. We've had a great summer, great fall. There's a lot of optimism and momentum. And so this is the next step. Uh, look forward to seeing all the students in the student section this weekend. 90 minutes before the game, uh, the, tick, the, the doors will open uh, for the student section. Anything on that, Scotty Mack, we missed? No, just their official Twitter handle. Okay, what is that? At, at the Corral UT. At the Corral UT. Is that right, Spark? Okay. Also appreciate you guys. Can't thank you enough every time I see you. Um, you know, Texas basketball, the story is our players. Uh, it's always going to be the players. That's, that's the identity of our program. Appreciate last year's players getting us started. And there's a lot of optimism right now with our program because of the players. So. All you guys in your different avenues telling our stories of our players, our players' stories is really what the program's all about. So today you got a chance to see, uh, was it CB and Brock? Two guys I'm really excited about. You know, Brock's been here at Texas, seems like 27 years now, and he's got about five years left. But, um, man, I did not like uh, competing against Brock when we were on the other side, but I always had a lot of respect for him. And now a chance to coach him, it's just been a lot of fun. He's a guy I believe in. Uh, he, he resembles our program in so many ways. A tough guy, he's a talented guy. He's, gonna, he's already gotten his degree from the University of Texas. He's in grad school right now, working on a master's. Had a great season last year, and I really think he can take the next step this year. Had it as good an off season as I've ever seen in college basketball. So, can't wait for the fans and you guys to see Brock play on Saturday afternoon. Uh, Christian Bishop, uh, another guy that's going to graduate from the University of Texas this May. He's finishing up his academic work, somebody I just really believe in. Uh, CB was an all-conference player in this league last year, so that kind of speaks for itself, uh, the quality of play in the Big 12. I think, I think he's, a, he's a guy that's going to play professional basketball for a long time. In a lot of ways, I've told you guys this before, he's the energy of our team. He's kind of the leader in our locker room just through his own emotions. He's never in a bad mood. He's always in a positive mood. He competes. He's one of those guys that you just want to be around. CB makes our locker room better. He makes our team better. He just makes our program better every day with what kind of person he's in. Uh, but I appreciate you guys telling Brock and CB's story this week after today's press conference. Any questions? Chris, you scrimmage one of the best, toughest in the country. How do you think they held up to Yeah, we enjoyed uh, closed door competition uh, against Houston. Coach Sampson, we played this game for many years. I think this might have been the fourth or fifth year that we played it. Um, you know, we've been meeting in kind of a neutral site and close the doors. And it's, uh, it's a great, great first step for both of our journeys. Uh, coach Sampson's a personal friend of mine. He's a coaching mentor. Um, uh, we, we've known each other for a long time. And um, so I'm always interested to, if his opinion on our team. So we normally play the game. And the next day, after we both watch the film a couple times, we, uh, we talk to each other. So we had a great conversation, gave me my opinion on some things about his team, what we thought. And then I'm also always so uh, eager to hear what he thought. Uh, but it was competitive. Both teams got better. 
um, veteran players established themselves on both sides, and then young players really grew as the scrimmage went on. Um, what Coach Sampson's done at Houston, uh, is, you know, we're trying to build that here. He's, um, the goal here is not to be a one-hit wonder, or have one good team or one good run. We want to build a consistent program where every year, you know, Texas is going to be a part of the fight. And I think that's exactly what Coach Sampson has done uh, in his time. Uh, they've now gone from one or two good teams to a real program. And that's what we're trying to build here. Um, some things we learned about our team, uh, you know, we've got a long ways to go, but I think we could really be good defensively, length and athleticism, toughness and IQ veteran players and young guys that have all been coached at a high level in high school and on the circuit. Um, offensively, we got a lot of talent. Um, we can score in a lot of different ways. We can play different ways. Um, so we were pleased with a lot of the things that we learned about our team in the closed door scrimmage. Obviously, you know, you've had them in practice the last few months, but now that you've got to see, um, you know, Tyrese and Marcus play together, how do you think they're playing off and one-on-one -on -one each other? And how do you think that relationship uh, is kind of evolving? Yeah, it's going well. It's uh, still a long ways to go. You know, it's the first inning of a long, long game. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's a work in progress. But it starts with just the relationship with those two guys. You know, I've said it before. The lead recru recruiter for Tyrese to come to Texas was Marcus. Um, and I think one of the reasons why Tyrese wanted to come here was to play with other really good players, Marcus being one of those. So. The idea of having two playmakers, two guards that can score, two, ga two guards that can play make, two guards that can defend, two guards that can lead, um, you know, it was the design of our team. Got a long ways to go for it to hit on all cylinders, but, you know, it's never the goal to, to be the best team in November, December. It's always get to late February and March, gives you a chance to play in April. Um, but those two guys are playing well, and I've been really impressed with the relationship they have. Uh, they've worked at it, and uh, each day they get a little bit closer. Yeah, Arkansas is, uh, will test us in a lot of ways. It's going to be a great game, great challenge. Um, they have a lot of length and athleticism. Uh, they're a team that it's kind of hard to tell who's the point guard and who's the power forward. They're, they're all long and athletic. Um, they're a team that can switch a lot on defense and play different ways, so very similar to a lot of the teams that we'll have to play through in our non-conference and certainly in the Big 12, no doubt about it. Uh, Coach Muss's teams always have an identity of playing extremely hard. Uh, we played his teams at Nevada. We played his teams, uh, you know, since he's been at Arkansas. We played him in the NCAA tournament one year. So we know they're going to play extremely hard. Um, we know they're going to be really diverse on defense. And then offensively, they do a lot of good stuff, uh, a lot of kind of NBA basketball isos and actions. And they move the ball. And they're a team that values passing. Um, so it's going to test our team a lot. Um, you know, in an exhibition game format, obviously the scoreboard's going to be on. Uh, but probably more important to us is taking the next step before the regular season starts. So we'll try to get different guys in this game. We'll try to play different combinations. Uh, we'll try to learn about ourselves while competing against Arkansas, if that makes sense. Coach, you have a, a lot of team speed this year. Do you envision you were pushing the pace a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a big part of our identity. It's probably our number one objective this summer uh, was to play to play with a tempo that gives us a chance to be successful and to use our players and their talent to play you know, a lot more on the open court. Um, you know, when you say, you know, last year it's almost like negative, but it's not at all. Like, I, again, I can't say it enough. I loved last year's team. I, I love those guys. I thought we set the team up in a way to be successful. One basket or one stop away from the second weekend in our first year at Texas, I think, um, you know, that team was really good last year. Um, are we satisfied? No. We didn't come to Texas to, to play in the NCAA tournament. We came to Texas to win the NCAA tournament. But um, you know, this year, we want to play differently. But that's no different than any a year A to year B or year 16 to year 17. You're always, always wanting to improve. So one way that we want to improve our team this year is to be more aggressive on offense in the open court. And I think it'll be easy to see that um, on Saturday. And a lot of it has to do with our players and their talent. Yeah, twofold. We really want to test ourselves. It's always been the objective of our non-conference schedules to prepare ourselves to play in the Big 12. Um, and then twofold. Secondly, you know, we're at Texas. And you don't come to Texas to do anything but to play the best. Um, everybody can't play here. 
everybody can't coach here, everybody can't work here. It's a different level of expectations. And to me, that's what excites me. That's what drove me here. It doesn't concern me, you know. And um, there's a lot of programs like that. You know, we're not the only one like that, but this is one of them. So, you know, when you come to Texas, you're going to play a nationally ranked schedule. And I thought last year's schedule, um, you know, was well. Rodney Terry did a great job with last year's schedule, but we all can see very obvious the changes from year one to year two. So this is like a, a Tom Pender schedule. This is like a Rick Barnes schedule. Uh, this is like a, an aggressive Shaka Smart schedule. This is a, a Texas basketball schedule. So, um, yeah, to play nationally ranked teams beginning with Arkansas was by design. Um, it's easy to sit up here and talk about, but it's really difficult to to perform with the schedule we put in front of these guys. But, you know, that's the goal. And I think uh, this year's schedule will pay dividends. It's really important to stay the course. You know, we can't get too high or too low. We can't be defined on what one night scoreboard says. Uh, it's more about the process and the journey and getting where we need to be down the line. So that is one responsibility that I feel, not to let our team get too high or too low under this schedule that we have and reminding the veteran players that um, it's all about getting better and um, reminding the young guys that, you know, just go out there and perform, have fun, play loose, play free. And um, that's kind of the goal around here. Two last ones, please. You know, coach, a lot of coaches really, they look at where they're ranked sometimes and say, and downplay it. Like, I don't know what people are seeing in us. You're kind of the opposite. You sort of seem to embrace that. Why is it? Well, in terms of the rankings, I, I, I really do not know what we're ranked. I can honestly tell you that. I know that. Last season, somebody told us that we might have been ranked number one in some people's polls preseason. I thought that was, you know, obviously uh, way premature. But I took it as a compliment for our players. Uh, that means that the people that were voting, both in the media and the coaches' poll, had a high opinion of our players, and maybe in some small way, a high opinion of our program and what and what we have done over the years. So um, this year, I, I know we're ranked because I see the recruiting mailouts and that kind of thing, but I, I don't know uh, what we're ranked. Um, to me, it really doesn't matter preseason. It's good for fans. It's good for the program. It's good for the corral, uh, but it means nothing. Uh, you got to understand, we've had teams that weren't ranked um, to start the season, and we've played for championships. So, And on the other way around, some years you get ranked, and things don't go your way early. So, um, But I like it all. Anything that brings attention to college basketball and anything that gets the fans excited and all that, it's good, but as coaches and players, we're much more concerned where we stand as the season goes on and not necessarily where we start. Chris, how do you assess shooting early in the year? Are you looking for just percentages, or are you more focused on guys working to get good shots? Yeah, all of the above. Uh, I think we certainly have some objectives each game on how we win the game. Uh, we don't just tell the guys, hey, you know, play hard, get out there, go fight, win. Uh, we tell the guys, you know, execute our plan. There's a mathematical way to win a college basketball game. There's a bunch of ways. Uh, we always strive for the perfect game. Never quite got there, but we came close a few times over the years. It's fun as a competitor, but there's ways to win the game in a stat sheet defensively and offensively. There's ways to not beat yourself that always give you a chance to win. Offensively, shooting percentage is a big deal. Uh, you know, making shots uh, makes the game so much easier. But there's ways to win the games when you don't make shots either. Offensive rebounding, low turnover, defense. Uh, so with shooting, it's assessed in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, one thing we explain to our guys is the best player that ever played this game made half his shots. So that means he missed half his shots. So um, we spend a lot of time talking about how we miss. Uh, we don't want our best players missing short. We don't want our best players, you know, taking contested shots unless uh, the game and possession called for it. Um, so it's not just about shots. It's about how you shot the ball correctly. You know, there's nights that Steph Curry, the best shooter on the planet, in my opinion, you know, doesn't make every shot, but he shoots the ball the way he wants to on his terms almost every time. So, um, but shooting percentage is a big one. We have we have the chance to be a good shooting team this year, and in my opinion, we have some really good shooters that we're trying to motivate, coach, teach, push, influence to become like elite shooters. Um, we've got some guys right now that are you know, light green, dark yellow, and we're looking for those green light shooters. A lot of it's mentality and reps and getting enough shots to become those guys. But um, I, I, feel, I feel good about where our shooting is, but we have a ways to go. Uh, we need some guys to have the best year they've ever had shooting the ball. And we need some of our young guys uh, to, to, to make shots on this stage earlier in their career. 
Um, but that's no different than anybody else. You know, I feel like I have to do the best job I've ever done in coaching this year, period. Uh, that's what I have to do. I wake up every day understanding that. And I think our players understand that too. Thanks, all. Appreciate, Appreciate you all.